Hey everyone, it's Dr. Zor here and welcome to Skillcap's guide to playing Sage and Valorant. We have looked at some of the top pros currently playing Sage to provide you with the best Sage guide that you won't find anywhere else. By the end of this guide, you'll have learned tips and tricks on Sage's abilities that nobody has seen yet, the best positions to use each ability, tactics to open up sites for your team, and so much more. All this information will be backed up by demonstrations to ensure you understand each tip and trick provided. Alright, enough of the hype, let's jump right into the video. First off, we need to talk about Sage's role on the team, which greatly impacts the way you want to play this agent. Sage is a sentinel, meaning she's a defensive expert who can lock down areas of the map. Along with that, she also plays a supportive role with abilities that can heal and resurrect teammates. With these aspects in mind, you may want to play more passively to ensure you have these abilities available for coordinated team play and area of denial. Now this doesn't mean playing far back behind your teammates and baiting them. You want to be cautious being the first person, but you want to make sure that you're still with your teammates and training them out if they do end up going down. Also make sure that you pay close attention to comms from your teammates as well as any sound that the enemies make as it will highly dictate where you want to be positioned to back up your teammates or to stall an enemy push. First off, let's go over one of Sage's most valuable abilities, her barrier orb. Place this down and you'll be able to completely block off a choke point. The most common places you want to place this wall is in the middle of the map such as A short on bind and middle on split. Before we go into where you want to place the barrier orb, it's important to note that you can actually rotate the wall in order to get the position you'd like. You can first do this by pressing C which will flip the barrier orb 90 degrees but you can also hold right click and move your mouse to the left or right to rotate the wall more precisely. This aspect of Sage's barrier orb is very important as it allows you to play more positions on the map while still being able to place the appropriate wall when necessary to slow players down. Now a common mistake that players will do is they will place the barrier orb at the very start of the round once the timer ticks, they will place it. The issue with this is that you're taking a gamble on whether enemies are actually going towards the site that you walled. If they end up going elsewhere, you have wasted the ability and won't have it available for a potential retake. Not only that, but barrier orb is one of the most expensive abilities in game costing 400 credits, so using this ability carelessly can potentially be very detrimental to winning a round. To identify the right timing and placement for this wall, you want to listen in for sound and if you hear several players about to come through a choke point, that is when you want to place the wall down. And by doing so, now you know for sure that your ability effectively blocked off a push from the enemy team. One thing to note about Barrier Orb is it can be difficult to place if there are any elevated areas such as stairs near your position. An easy way to fix this is to bring your crosshair higher than normal to ensure you get the position that you want. This will help to mitigate the flicking that can occur when you're trying to place a wall normally when you're on the stairs. Another neat trick you can do with Barrier Orb is boosting onto it to surprise enemy players. For example, you can wall off middle on split and then actually peek out to surprise enemy players. This is a great way to grab some frags on unsuspecting enemies. Be careful doing this for multiple rounds though as enemy players will start to catch on but it can be good to use time to time to catch people off. To wrap things up with Sage's Barrier Orb, it's important to note that it can be shot down. It has 800 health and a little more than a full clip from a Phantom or Vandal will take it down. With more players shooting it, the wall can be broken pretty easily so don't let your guard down and believe that a choke point is completely safe just because you've placed the wall up. Next up is Sage's Slow Orb. This is a durable projectile that will spread onto a designated area, slowing down anyone that goes through it. Not only that, but if anyone walks through the slow orb, it will make noise, giving you a heads up if players decide to push through the slow. If they do though, their movement is going to be significantly lowered, making them an easy target to grab headshots on. However, if enemies walk on the slow orb, they won't make any noise, so continue to be alert of the areas you've placed your slow orb at, as enemies could still potentially push through it. You can place these orbs directly on the ground, but you can also bounce them into walls to land in positions that you wouldn't normally be able to hit. You can see how I can throw a normal slow orb onto middle and split, but it doesn't go very deep into the stairs, and thus players could potentially still push through it quickly and catch you off guard. However, if you bounce this ability off the wall, you can get some extra depth and cover the entire stairs, making it more difficult and less tempting for enemies to try to push straight through it. Similar to Barrier Orb, you want to use these abilities only when you hear enemies nearby or your teammates have called out an enemy's position in order to slow down and push. For example, if we play back sight and hear enemies coming through a short, we can throw a slow orb to try to delay the push. Likewise, if enemies try to attack onto B and you've rotated over to spawn to help your teammate out, you can throw slow orbs into window or octagon. Even though you weren't able to hear the enemies pushing out, your teammates were able to call it and thus you can throw these abilities into the locations that they've called the enemies at. One small note is that there are some lineups you can use with slow orbs similarly to Silva's Shock Ball and Recon Ball. 
I have seen players trying to practice this out, but they aren't actually all that efficient with this ability in particular. Because this ability doesn't do any damage and only slows players down, you won't really find much benefit to lining up a slow orb from a far away distance. For example, throwing a slow orb lineup on a default spike plant position won't actually do any damage or stop the player from defusing. And by the time you can run back into position, Dammy will probably have to fuse the spike already or you've lost a large amount of time that the slow orb was triggered for. So the majority of the time, placing the slow orbs normally or bouncing them off of walls that are nearby to get the area you want will be more than efficient to delaying player pushes. Next is Sage's signature ability, Healing Orb. This ability is pretty self-explanatory and a left click will heal one of your teammates and a right click will heal yourself. What makes this ability complex is having good awareness of your health and your teammates health at all times. When you see that your teammate has gone into a fight and won it, you may want to check out player's health on the top of the screen to see if they took a lot of damage. If they did, you may want to try to maneuver yourself over to them to heal them back. This could include simply running over to heal them or walling slash slowing off a choke point and then running over to ensure that players can't push through the area you were responsible for. One unique thing about healing orb is that it will automatically target the lowest health player. So if you're in the heat of the moment, you don't necessarily need to spend additional time trying to find which player you need to heal. Instead, simply click E and click where your teammates are and you'll be able to get that player. While playing Sage, you'll likely have many teammates that will constantly ask if you have your heal available during a round. Perhaps they need one and you told them that it's on cooldown for another 30 seconds, in which they proceed to ask you if it's up every 10 seconds. A neat trick you can tell your teammates who do this is that they can actually check for the heal themselves by pressing left alt. This will identify the abilities that Sage has available. If the heal is not up, you'll see the ability grayed out. And if it is up, you'll see the ability fully colored. Also, be cautious when using Healing Orb in locations where the enemy may potentially hear you. The use of this ability does make a sound that others can hear and this can give away you or your teammate's location. Luckily, this range is relatively small but it can make an impact on whether your location is revealed or remains hidden. Lastly, we have Sage's ultimate ability, Resurrection. Just like the name implies, this will revive a dead teammate, giving them full health but they won't have any armor. When using this ability though, you do want to be careful when you're trying to approach your dead teammate. Enemy players may be suspecting that you're going for the resurrect and could be waiting for you to push towards that area. Not only that, but it will take a few seconds for your teammate to return to the action and be able to shoot back, so you want to make sure that you're guarding the body until your teammate can play again. In order to safely bring back your teammate from the dead, there may be situations where you may want to use your wall to block enemies off and then use your resurrection so that enemies can't take full advantage of this delay. One more trick you can do with Sage's resurrect is use it to bait enemies to peek you. You can resurrect the enemies and then hide slightly while the animation is occurring. Once the animation is near completion, you can then peek to throw the enemy off guard and get a kill while they're distracted by the resurrected player. Now that we've gone over Sage's abilities, let's review what you want to have on the first round buy in the pistol rounds. Despite Sage's barrier orb being nerfed in recent patches, it still has a large amount of health and is quite difficult to break with mere pistols. Because of this, you should be purchasing the barrier orb at all times during these pistol rounds as it will take quite a while for enemies to take it down and most players will decide to just avoid it which allows you to rotate onto other parts of the map. If enemies do decide to push it, they won't be able to break it for at least a couple of seconds in which your team can then rotate back accordingly before enemies can make a push. From there, you have two options you can do with Sage. You can either purchase two slow orbs or light armor. The slow orbs are a great secondary ability to help slow down a push, so on defender side, I will usually go this route. On attacker side, I expect to need to go a little bit more aggressive and push into enemy crosshairs, and if the enemy has a ghost, I could be potentially eliminated with one headshot. To avoid this, I will usually go for light armor on the attacker side, as I expect to take damage as I engage enemies versus on defender side where I'm more focused on stalling enemy pushes rather than going for the aim duels. To wrap everything up, we're going to put everything together and show how a typical round looks like on the attacker side and defender side when playing Sage, and we're going to start off on the attacker side. On the attacker side, you want to usually be in the back of your teammates, trying to support them as much as possible. Now this does not mean to bait your teammates, wait for them to fight an enemy and get killed before you decide to peek them. You want to go in with your teammates and be there to help assist with eliminating enemy players and being ready to heal any players that end up taking some damage and being low on health. The reason you want to be behind your teammates is so that you can increase your chances of survival. If you end up going in first and enemies focus you and kill you, then the team no longer has that heal available for them. You want to be the second, third, fourth, or fifth player going onto a site to ensure that enemies will focus you less, your teammates can take more of the damage initially, and then you can heal them back up. 
Now when trying to push through a choke point, you want to use your wall and slow orbs to block over enemy vision and slow down enemy rotation so you have more time to push the site against fewer enemies. For example, on split, you want to place a sage wall on the right side of the garage entrance point, which will then block off any vision of players that are around heaven and rafters. You can then focus more on players that are on the site or on the back of site, and if successfully done, you'll have control of B and be able to get the plant down. Another example is if your teammate decides to push through mail room to B, you'll want to wall off vents to block off any players that could be there or plan to be rotating there, and then your team will be able to safely focus on pushing players that could be in mail, heaven, or rafters. By doing this, players willing through vents will have a tough decision of either shooting down the wall and revealing their location, or running back to B through the defender spawn, which will take up a lot of time and allow you to plant the spike and set up to defend up. If you have any slow lorbs available, you want to pay attention to sound and team communication. If you hear any players approaching, you want to place your slow orb there to stall them for an additional 7 seconds. Do be cautious though for players that may try to make the unexpected move of pushing through the slow orb though. On the defender side, the main goal for Sage is to cover a choke point and use her abilities to stall enemies as long as possible. To fully fulfill this role, you'll want to play the middle areas of each map. Middle is usually where attackers will be able to perform powerful split pushes from, and Sage's wall is perfect to prevent this from happening. So like we mentioned earlier, pay attention to any noise or communication on enemy locations. If you hear them approaching middle, you'll want to use up your wall. If you hear enemies pushing onto a site itself, you'll want to rotate over to support your team in defending that site, and you'll want to save your wall to block off a choke point that enemy players may be at. For example, if attackers were able to plant the spike on A for A long, chances are they're hiding in that choke point for when defenders tap the spike. Now that you've saved the wall up, you can completely deny this strategy and potentially get yourself a free defuse or a free kill when enemy panics to try to shoot down your wall. So the key points for defense with Sage is to play the middle area, pay attention to who needs heals, and set yourself up to get to them, and use your wall to defend middle for enemies or to block off and slow down choke points when retaking a site. Alright, so what is your favorite map to play Sage on? Let us know in the comment section below, and while you're down there, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides just like this one with one goal in mind, helping you become a better player. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching, we'll catch you in the next, I'm Dr. Zora, and good luck out there.